Well, with Aaron Green on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. And I'm so happy to say, and my guest today is Erin Brown. Yes. Huh? <laughs> well, look here. I played, I asked my producer to play that song for me because, right, I have Erin Brown here. And seeing her this morning reminded me that it is the disabled community mm -hmm. or the community of people with disabilities mm -hmm. that has been leading the advocacy movement, right? Like the advocacy charge over the last few decades, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like the, the advocacy, the disabilities community was the first community to host a conference open to the public on the sustainable development goals. Mm -hmm. And they really leading Bahamians into space, right? Mm -hmm. Like they, they, they take in the charge. Mm -hmm. But after this conversation, I like that song too, because I want to remind our leaders and the people in the political class and the people who feel like they're on the cutting edge of development in this country, right? Mm -hmm. I want to remind them of something Leon Williams said, that you gotta be careful, like paraphrasing Leon, you gotta be careful that you're not dragging people into a future they're not prepared right. for, right? That is one of the most paramount uh, responsibilities of a government because they have to balance the need to preserve the past the need to provide for the present and the need to prepare for the future, right? They got to balance all of that yeah. in, in, in every decision. Yes. And in that, you got to make sure that you're not dragging people into a future they're not prepared for. So you could achieve something or feel like you could have achieved something or feel like you live somewhere or try to justify a paycheck. I mean, you haven't prepared Ooh. the people to be there. Right, and it's the same thing. We allude to the vaccination discussion. More people take vaccinations, mm -hmm. but you haven't prepared them to be a vaccination taking people. You haven't prepared them to be mm -hmm. medically literal, literate, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to read the pamphlet on the medication. See, here's another thing: you're not creating an environment for that either, because the pharmacists don't have enough time to talk to you about yes. the medication you're taking. Or research. Right, and they try in. Yeah. They try in. Yeah. It's just too much. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like, we watch TV and we see these lovely things on TV with, and hardly pay attention to what's required to create it. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Good morning, Ms. Brown. How are you good doing? Good morning. Good morning. It is a great Thursday to be on the clock. And I love what you started with because a lot of times when we think about disability, we think of separate and apart persons doing things within a silo over there mm -hmm. because they're quote unquote differently abled or, or, or different and all of these other terms we have coined. But in the history of all nations, persons with disabilities were present and accounted for and played a crucial part in nation building and development. Absolutely, yeah. I do. Yes, I do. Okay, so introduce us. I didn't give people your full title. Mm -hmm. I want to let you do that yourself. Sure, sure. So yes, my name is Erin Brown, and and as Erin Green, I started off as um, self advocacy because I'm living with a disabil um, disability, but also human rights advocacy mm -hmm. because we recognize that all of us are differently abled, and therefore we have our barriers, our challenges that we face, and we must. Um, identify and resolve. And now I am a disability inclusion consultant. I'm currently in the Office of Disabilities and Compliance at the Univers University of the Bahamas, which is a, another huge step to even have such an office exist within the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, within mm -hmm. the treasury higher learning yes. space. So inclusive education is a priority. Absolutely. And see, it's not just the doctorates, right? It's not just having doctors as professors that make it a university. No. It's also ensuring that you have these spaces yes. that makes it a university. Yes. And I'm also, um, as a disability inclusion consultant, I am also running a disability-led business and organization called Aaron Brown Connects, Disability Advocacy and Inclusion Management. Keyword, business and organization. So it is, it has the charitable um, model, but it also has the service model. So therefore, those things we like for free 99, we also have to pay for a service because yeah. it's a, a service provider um, business. And I'm the first power triathlete for the Bahamas. Yeah, um, let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> power triathlete. Athlete, yes. See, because I am um, a triathlete. 
I am a, f a free water floating champion. Okay. Okay. I can float in any salty body of water. Okay, so you 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 treading, you treading no, no, the water. No, float, float. Okay, you float. You okay, float, float, float. floating. Yeah, I look like I did in the water, but I float. I'm a champion at that. Okay. I'm also a champion one-handed dishwasher. Ooh. Yeah. One hand. Yeah, only one hand. Look here. I could wash and dry with one hand. Mm. I used to wait for one restaurant on Hawkins Hill. <laughs> I was the best a dishwasher. <laughs> also, I is um, a parking specialist. See now, I'm from Grand Bahama. I'm a mm. Grand Bahama native. So when I hear people say the parky, the parky, and the no, the, no, the, we don't know about parky. We don't know what that is. I, I I always laugh when I hear someone say those terms. I go, oh boy. <laughs> But you're a specialist at that. Yeah, I'm a specialist hey. at parking. Because hey. you ain't to see me. Because I ain't going to be on the court. You will never park me. <laughs> it don't even make sense. But see, this, this is why I love the term differently able. A lot yeah. of times we, we like to coin it for persons with disabilities. But it's, it's describing the human race. Able-bodied are describing the human race. We're all abled. Differently able is describing the human race. Right. Okay. And so when we're talking about persons with disability or the disability community, we need to acknowledge that part of our identity. Yeah. Disability is a part of our identity as sex, gender, race, sexual orientation, right. so on and so forth. For too long, we have left it to the side and we have not acknowledged it and therefore it is shown up in spaces lack of funding, lack of program and initiatives, lack of access or, or frameworks, inclusive frameworks and opportunities. This is why we're at the spot that we're in right now because we remove the ability for a human being to self-identify in a sustainable way because we've experienced such negative and devaluement and and yeah. and oh no um that, that's to the left that that's not for this space inclusivity is for all spaces disability and sex all spaces we must understand that this is where a huge gap has lied for any nation but specifically the bahamas you know four hundred thousand persons were a test model I mean, I know we, we already heard the experimental testing type of theories that we might be going through right now, but there are benefits to that as well. Right. I mean, I've, I've said for the last 15 years, the Bahamas government should be selling this country mm. as a space where you could come and partner with tertiary institutions like the University of the mm -hmm. Bahamas and BTVI. Even UWI, Caribbean-centric. Right. In the Caribbean, and we are and able build, to do and this. come and build yes. models for yes. your small town yes. or small country yes. right here. And that includes your vulnerable group members, your high-risk group members, those who live with comorbidities, those who live with disabilities. That includes everyone. And we need to change and be intentional in that change in those steps. Let's not say it just to make it sound good. Yes, the, the UN SDGs are talking about in 2030, we're going to have more access and we want to reduce poverty, poverty and all of these things. Yet we still don't have a framework that is inclusive to include the consultants with disabilities, to include the professionals with disabilities, to include persons who live in social economic um, areas that may not be deemed as the most profitable ones or we still haven't gotten any questions or answers from. This is the time. COVID was a gift. Yes, I said that. COVID was a gift because it spoke to accessibility that we in our community was denied for for eons because we were told it was too expensive. It's going to take too long. Be patient. Please give us time to. Yet within six to six months, three to six months, we had um, remote working. We had flex shift hours. We had curbside. We had digital Every, conversations. Is, everything that the disabled community was lobbying for, yes. petitioning for, and pointing out, and framing out, yes. and building. Yes. And the disabled community built a lot of these yes. models. Through the hurt, through the right, pain, through systems. the denial, through the decline. As soon as something... Um, trouble the potential capital, right? Of non-disabled persons and, and businesses. The and businesses mm -hmm. is like, oh no, we're going to have to do that right, right away. <laughs> right away. Right away, we're going to have to do that. And this these is. are real conversations. And, and, it, and we need you to be authentic and transparent and say, oh boy, yes, we did do that. It's, it's not about the blame game anymore. And you know, we've, we've grown up in a culture, especially a politicized culture, where we're so busy um, blaming each other 
We have all played a part in this. Acknowledge your part. Mm -hmm. Now produce resolutions. Now include. Now increase access. Give us opportunities to sustain and thrive within a country and a nation and a world that consistently tell us that we are of no value. Yeah. yeah. Our lives, even right down to medical and health care, our lives are of no value. And I mean... Even every day, and I talk about it every, every day. moment. Every time you park your car on a sidewalk, you are telling a disabled person, I don't care about you. As far as I'm concerned, you could hop yourself in the road and get licked down by car. That's mm -hmm. how offensive it is. Yet, it's also offensive for the non-disabled pedestrian who needs, who has a right to have access to that sidewalk mm -hmm. and no longer has it because someone has parked there. And there's a culture in the Bahamas when we think of accessibility, we're thinking about ramps only. Mm -hmm. We're thinking about doorways. We're thinking about railings. And, and once you've had that, boom, you've magically just became accessible. It is more than that. Accessibility, like I stated before, and I will say it again, and I want you to hold on to that when you're unsure of anything else. Access is a human right. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you would think, like, having this conversation in this time when people's freedom of movement, when their mobility has been restricted. Oh, but let's talk about that. I mean, everybody was just stir crazy and, and just upset that, oh, I, I can't go out at a certain time. You mean I can't go over there? This, you have gotten a pill that persons in our community have been dealing with for years. Our caretakers, our service providers, our loved ones have been dealing this Dealing with this, I am not the first person with a disability in the world or in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. I will not be the last. But what I will tell you is the breath that I have been given, I will engage, I will amplify, and I will empower the voices within my community to learn how to self-advocate and advocate your needs on a global, national, um, um, industrial space. It intersects everything. It does, absolutely. Now, I am a bit remiss. I got some texts here. Yes. And... Um, let me start with a brief message from the Department of Inland Revenue. The Real Property Tax Forgiveness Program continues. Save on your real property tax. Bahamian property owners can take advantage of waivers on their real property tax in one of two ways. One, bring your account to zero. Or two, get a payment plan. Offer ends August 31st, 2021. For further information, email rptforgive at bahamas.gov.bs or call 242-225-5778 and that is a toll-free number. Again, this message is brought to you by the Department of Inland Revenue. Now, I got a lot of texts here, a wide variety of texts. We're going to yes. run through them and then we're going to end the show with our discussion. First text, morning, the great FNM, FNM, two straight, maybe four. <laughs> Maybe four, maybe more, <laughs> since we know Sri Ryman today. Uh, another text, great show as usual. I will like criticize two points the PM made last night. He said he don't like needles, but it don't hurt. What needle you know don't hurt. And two, he said the government made millions of dollars. I would not announce that because you know civil servants would want their money because no excuse. Because he bragging the government got it like that. It did seem like a bit of a campaign ad, and I felt very patronized with that story, sir. It's... Um, this is a global pandemic. Yeah. There's a 100-year pandemic. Yeah. Ain't no time for them type of stories. Another text, Ms. Green, just heard you say the show is sponsored by Inland Revenue. Perhaps you can just tell them I said thank you for keeping me on hold for 40 minutes. <laughs> oh, my. Dear Inland Revenue, this is a critique about the bit of customer service. Every time I call when I email to say I need help, they tell me call the same number again. Okay, I will also put in a note here. To BTC, to please check Inland Revenue's phone, phone. systems. Mm -hmm. And the people in Inland Revenue, to please check your phone systems to make sure the connections are going where they are going. Yes. Um, I would tell every corporate body in this country, please make sure that your voicemail systems are initialized. Mm -hmm. Maintenance. Yeah. It's important. Absolutely. Uh, another text, taxi drivers also parking in the loading zone. Another text, Aaron, you are not being fair with the PM. He never spoke about mandatory vaccinations. He simply pleaded with Bahamians to take the vaccine. What is your solution, Aaron, for the situation? Not what should have been done. What is your solution today for the overflowing hospitals? Well, first of all, what I said was that I didn't hear the Prime Minister 
speak about va mandatory vaccines. That's what I said. Because others have said it. Others have indicated that at the state level there are conversations taking place mm -hmm. about mandatory vaccines. The Minister of Health said that we're not currently considering, or we're not considering it currently at this time, mm -hmm. which if you all don't understand politicians speak, is we have been thinking about this every day for the last three months, but we are not going to say anything. As yet. As yet. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. So when I didn't hear him mention it, mm -hmm. I expected to hear the Prime Minister say, my fellow Bahamians and residents, you could trust me that we are not going to implement any type of mandatory vaccination program until we have a real mm -hmm. conversation with mm -hmm. the Bahamian people. That's what I expected him to hear. On another point, what is my solution? Politicians take a pay cut and actually focus on upgrading PMH. All them fancy administrative buildings that you all yeah. and offices that you all constructed turn them into patient care facilities. That's like the Portia Smith Student Services Building at COB with no NO space for students or things that students like to do. Right? I almost drop out of COB because of that. Yeah. Well, they, they now have, um, well, they previously had, but they have a space now called the hub. But, you know, a lot of, I think you're touching a really sensitive, a sensitive topic because students miss their campus. Like, we've been off that campus now and we are like... We want to get back on the campus, but we understand that we need to do it safely, and um, there are a lot of things that needs to be done. So, right, and there are no, and there are a lot of cultural shifts, right? Yeah. That's a big thing. And this last text here, Aaron, washing the dishes with one hand, you say, "Did you get those bad boys a hundred percent clean?" <laughs> if I am an That's Olympian, the question. That's right. <laughs> She's I a champion. A, I'm in the special, <laughs> special, special Olympics for silly people, and I have a gold medal in that. Thank you very much. Well, you're going to have to name it something else, because Special Olympics is for intellectual athletes, so you're going to have to coin one other term. I can't call it special, special, no, special. No, you can't call it special. I'm triple special. Call it the only, I don't know. Only the Bahamians could apply Olympics. How I can get a gold medal <laughs> if actual athletes compete? <laughs> don't make any sense. we got to call her on the line. Call her on the clock. You acquired a disability. Huh? You acquired a disability. I guess so. Mm -hmm. So I, I hear you. I, I hear the part where you talk about how we've been living our life, like social distancing and physical distancing. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we don't have to be forced to take the vaccine. No. Yes. Take the vaccine 
Well, give me your name again. I say the, 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 I say the voice sounds familiar, but I was trying to proper. Okay. Yes. I know the name. All right. So first of all, thank you for calling in and thank you for always being an active, yeah, thank you. an active voice. And what I want to, what I want to add to what you're saying, one, <clears throat> we're all inspirations. A lot of times, one of the, the challenges that we have living with the disability that everybody is so surprised that we're thriving, that we're successful, that we have voices, we have opinions, we have views while living with the disability. We're not doing it despite of, we're not overcoming our disability, engaging these spaces. We are doing as such any other human being would do. And, and when being born with a disability, the lived experience is different from one who acquired a disability like myself 17 years ago due to bone cancer, I became an amputee. So me acquiring a disability meant that for some parts of my life, I lived as a non-disabled person with all access. And the minute my leg was removed, so was my access. So a lot of our conversations, we also, and within our community, we also got to get past this inspirational type of message and more of engaging, um, interacting, being a part, um, being provide access, being giving opportunities, having inclusion in spaces that are about nation building and development because we are successful with our disabilities. We are thriving with our disabilities. Even though society has pro has created barriers, has created specific need barriers that is stopping us from completing a lot of things, yet we are finding ways in doing it. Now, the statistical data, that is one of the issues why a lot of persons aren't making decisions to take the vaccine or aren't having the ability to make an informed decision because we do not have statistical data and we don't even have emergency orders that speak specifically to our community, our service providers, our support networks, our caregivers. So asking for statistical data for those who are um, who have received the vaccine, we, we have yet to have that. As you heard in the PM's message, he spoke about homebound. And I would like to know was homebound referring to persons with disabilities because the term homebound is not the definition from a person with a disability. Now, look here, thank you so much, Erin Brown. Mm -hmm. I will have to have you back, hopefully next week. I want you all to know, I had reached out to Erin earlier in the month I need to say a couple things just as we leave in. To the people in the disabilities community that knew that this was International Disabilities Pride Month and didn't message me, I'm mad at you. You guys buy me a couple of ID. I gotta have you back. Hopefully next week I can have you on in our short a holiday weekend so we could continue this conversation. To pop up, of course I can let you run on. Look at all the valuable information yes. you brought as a yes. member of the community to the yes. discussion. That's why it's let people quote unquote run on mm -hmm. because they inform the conversation so mm -hmm. much. I got a couple of texts. I, I know I got to go carefully. Aaron, it is important to treat patients with dignity, respect, and care. Take Bahamians out of the yard and build a state of the art facility for all types of infectious diseases. We must revamp our current healthcare system. The dormitory is unacceptable. I'm sorry, Texas, I couldn't read the entire text. And to the person who said, uh, gay people, uh, good morning, Aaron, with all due respect, why do gay people disrespect Christians? I have to get back to that text at another time. Um, and I have another series of texts here. 
Um, I'm so sorry I couldn't read this in its entirety, but good morning, Miss Green. Um, I got you. I'm going to photocopy this. I'm going to take a picture of this. I haven't forgotten you. I got your text yesterday. It was informative. I just got to find space to put it into the show. We're going to reach out and talk. Thank you to my audience for tuning in. Yes. I want to say congratulations to BAMVI, the Bahamas Association for the uh, Visually Impaired. Oh, BAMVI, BAMVI, yes. For yes. the Blind and Visually, visually impaired. impaired, yes. Congrats to them. And uh, this conversation is going to continue. Thank you very much, Miss Erin Brown. Thank and to you. my audience, stay tuned because yes. Levon Miller and Unleashed is up next. Have a great day, Bahamas. <laughs>